Hello and welcome back to Mastering the Basics of eQuest Energy Modeling. My name is Neil Bolger and we're going to go and continue our lesson on space templates and how to link the space template idea to the HVAC thermal zones in eQuest. If you'll recall last time, we were looking at this idea of using this magical field, <laughs> and I joke because it sort of is magical, it's the only field in eQuest where you can basically write anything you want into it called the descriptions field. And using that field with a certain key for open office or in for other zones for conference, for example, we can change the people densities, we can change the equipment densities and the lighting densities. And looking at the formulas you have to write to get there. Well, using that same referenced space description, we can also change the thermal zones that are assigned to each one of those spaces. If you look at the thermal zones here in the airside system, you'll actually notice that all thermal zones are built on a one-to-one -one relationship with a space. Because of that, which is a the because of that relationship, which is only existing in some energy softwares, I should note that DO2 softwares such as eQuest, Energy Pro, and others often are the only ones that have this one-to-one -one relationship. Other tools such as Open Studio and IES, you can have multiple spaces exist in one zone if you really wanted to. But taking advantage of this linkage, we can actually start to define things such as the thermostat, or really the biggest one would be the outside air. And what I want to touch on is this inability eQuest actually has to link to be able to put in people flow rates as well as square footage flow rates and then add those two together for the total air flow rate. So this little tutorial will not only cover linking to space types, we'll also look at how to fulfill some of the zone ventilation minimum inputs that would require us to set up a model for say ASHRAE 62.1 ventilation. So if the way we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna start with a flow per person. In the same way before I was changing the user defined default, I'm gonna do that again uh, and maybe to start, I'm going to do an expression just so it doesn't crash. Let's see if this works. And this expression is the same as doing a user default expression, except it allows us to just do it for this one room. And if this one room works, we'll apply it to all the rooms. I don't want to crash my model if this doesn't work the first time. So the user expression. So in here, here we go. So we're going to write a switch statement again. Switch. And then we're going to do pound LR. LR instead of L, because now it's a local reference. The R is needed because we're in the air, air conditioning side of eQuest, and we're not in the space side. But it's at the same level. Either way, you'll start to see where the R is needed and is not needed. I'm actually going to just grab this code that I have here. Oh, yeah. Well, no, this is good. I'm going to write it out. So the R, why is the R needed and how do we know it's needed? So when it is needed, it means we're not in the space side of eQuest. eQuest has two sides, space and building spaces and inputs, and then air conditioning and thermal zones. So LR will say I want to point to a local reference that's not just in my air conditioning side. It could also be in my space side. And you're actually going to say I want to look at the space side. I'm going to cheat and look back what I need. And I want to grab the activity description. There we go. I'm going to delete my little paste that I just did. And that's going to find the same field. It's going to bring that field in. So again, here we had to use LR and space. But then again, you can now name all the conditions for the conference rooms. I um, can't remember, but I think it's seven and a half. See if I'm a person. Five for open office. I'm going to say zero for corridors and zero for mechanical. I'm going to copy this whole thing. So I'm going to hit OK, and it worked. So we can see this went pink, meaning it found some definition. Since that worked, I'm going to change it and make it a user defined default instead in the expression. So I'm going to hit Paste. And now I'm going to right click and do Restore Default, and now it's at 5. And now if I look at all these other rooms, I need to restore their defaults. Let's go to the spreadsheet and do that real quick. So if we go to the drop down outside air, we can see these two works. So these are the formula. I copied the formula. I'm going to paste it in. 
and just go down the list. So these are all the numbers that came out of the eQuest wizard mode, which I'm no longer in. I don't really know what they mean. Okay, we got our per person. Now we're gonna grab the floor area component. So I have it saved here in my little text. I'm gonna go back into a zone, outside air, right click the floor area, user defined defaults, click the radio button, paste that in. Now I've set up conference rooms 0.1 CFM a square foot. Again, I need to check that, see if that's actually, I, I don't think that's right. But for the purposes of today, you have some CFM a square foot value. So you can see now we have those two components. And now that's working. So I can check the spreadsheet. Sure enough, they all came in because there was no default inputs. So they're all there. And the last piece for ventilation that we're gonna set up, actually some other things we could just do really quick. You know, we could also start to change the thermostats. So I just pasted in the same set of equations, but now let's say that conference rooms are 75, corridors 75, open office 75, mechanical rooms, maybe those can be 78, and default be 75. So you know, you can just start to add in better better code throughout your building, uh, wherever wherever you have time to walk around and make, make changes. All right, I'm not gonna do this for too long, otherwise we'll be here all day. So anyways, you get the idea that could update. So let's go back to ventilation. Last thing for ventilation. So if you might remember earlier, I said in a video, eQuest is unlike the ventilation standards in that it does not add the different components of fresh air together to get the total fresh air. It just looks at all of these and the number of people in the area and it picks the highest one. And that can make it very difficult for us to actually put in changing values that look like 62.1 that we're used to using when we really need to add up the total of those. But because of this ability to look at a space, we can actually add both of these up into this airflow field by saying I want to take whatever's in this field and this field and times this one by the number of people in the space and times this one by the square footage of that space. Because in the spaces, those are both fields. There's a field called the number of people and then there's another field called area. And both of those can be referenced. And the way to know the name of both of those is to actually read the help file. If you were to look, or even under user default expression, it will say number of people. That's the name of that variable in this space. Same with area. Area, pretty basic. And so if we go back to the air side, what our equation looks like that I have copied, so I don't have to remember how to write it, I can write it once, and we'll pause and look at this in detail together. As some equations, I gotta delete those out. Okay, we're gonna make a default. Okay, this is the most complicated one. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna paste, we're just using referenced numbers. We're gonna make a local reference to the space and grab the number of people. Then we're gonna multiply that by a local variable, the outside air flow per and person. That's the name of this field here. And I got that by right clicking on the field and looking at it up here. Then we're gonna add what we just multiplied together. We're gonna to add that to the space area times the input for the outside air per the area using the same methods, local, local reference. And just for safety, in case we had an air change rate, we also have added in the volume of the space times any air change rate in case one of the rooms is a lab or that gets selected. Kind of covers all the bases. So I'm gonna hit okay, didn't work. Let's see what's going on here. So what didn't work about my equation was I actually don't have any air change rates. So I deleted that last line and it worked. So I hit okay and you can now actually see this is 344 CFMs of outside air. And if you go look at the spreadsheet view for outside air, all of these are now very dynamic values 
because they're now referencing the exact square footage of that zone and the exact number of people. And so the very interesting thing now, for instance, this core space, if we were to go make that internal core space a different occupancy type and say, well, now it's not a conference room, that's too big. This is an open office floor plan. That changed the number of people, the density changed. This green value is set by eQuest to follow the density. I hit done. And now we come back here, we go to spreadsheet view, go to outside air. And if people remember, this used to be 2000 CFM, it's now 400 CFM. So that just automatically came all the way through. I'm gonna hit save before I lose it all. And now I have a model that is linked to the space type fields. I now have my model working with four space types, five space types. I've linked it to the outside airflow and I could link it to more things. For instance, this one is to link it to the flow per area. So if we actually wanted to size VAV boxes for the total flow linked to some definition of whether or not it was a conference room, that could also be done. I'm gonna hit save and hit simulate and the model runs. When we come back, We'll look at a few other tips and tricks and ways to take some of these templates even further.